Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. So normally we would start with um, with our public forum. Um, however, um, the town has uh, received a little bit of uh, sad news. Uh, Longtime Hopkintonian select. She was a select. She was a selectman. Um, uh, Mary Pratt passed away this week, and um, <clears throat> I think it's probably very appropriate to take a, a moment and offer a moment of silence for Mary and her family. So, for a moment, just a moment of silence, please. Thank you. So, um, I did speak to Mary's son via text today and told him that I was going to uh, take a moment and, and just kind of uh, talk about Mary before we, we got into it, and he was all for it. <clears throat> so I knew Mary, uh, I've known Mary for uh, the, the vast majority of my life, definitely from uh, when I was 18 on. I would go up to town meeting and I would watch her and her husband Joe kind of run the show uh, for years and years and years. Um, and uh, I was able to, over the last four years, develop a very, a very close professional relationship with her uh, in my occupation. Uh, I got to spend uh, uh, an exorbitant amount of time with her and pick her brain and talk about town stuff. Um, and Mary was someone who, whether you wanted it or not, you were gonna get her opinion. She was brutally brilliant. And when those two characteristics came together, uh, if you had the ability to sit down and just kind of let her go and listen to her talk, it was amazing. Uh, Mary was my first vote for when I ran for uh, Board of Selectmen. She had an absentee ballot and uh, she showed me the vote before she popped it in the envelope and, and mailed it out. Uh, I grew up with, I was friends with her son Tommy and her daughter Martha. Um, but Mary was one of those people that was so vigilant once she sunk her teeth into an issue, and, and all her issues were generally town-based. Town um, once she sunk her teeth into an issue, that issue was not going to sleep until it was done. And if that issue, if the, uh, if the vote went against her, uh, it was not over. She was gonna come back and come back and come back. She was, uh, she was I guess, the epitome of when people say they're pit bulls. She was a pit bull, um, and her wit and her sarcastic sense of humor, uh, for me, will be missed uh, every day because I got to see her every day for the last four or five years. So um, I will miss her tremendously. The town, it was a tremendous loss for the town, and as the town grows in the leaps and bounds that it is, the uh, old time historian uh, townies, I guess we'll call it. She's definitely a townie, even though she's from Woodville. Um, <laughs> she, uh, you know, those are people that we, uh, that we can't replace. Uh, and generally when I say when a townie goes, we can't replace them, I, I use the analogy that, you know, all the, uh, the master's degree from MIT doesn't, uh, doesn't equal the common sense that she brings. Well, she had two master's degree from Wellesley College, so she's kind of, uh, she was an anomaly. Um, but uh, she will be missed tremendously. Uh, Brian, you had her, uh, you served on the board with her for a little bit. I'm sure you have a story you'd like to share. I, I did serve on the board when I first got elected in 2007. Mrs. Pratt, I called her Mrs. Pratt. Mrs. Pratt was here, and uh, a lot of folks didn't expect that she and I would get along. We got along famously. We had a blast. Uh, this was before texting and cell phones and things were kind of pre uh, prevalent during meetings, and uh, she would slip me the occasional note so Mrs. Kramer would be in the center chair and Mrs. Pr Mrs. Pratt would slip me a note about a joke or something like that and I'd burst out laughing in the middle of some other issue going on on the board. Uh, we had great fun. Uh, she was a, a, a lifelong advocate for Hopkinton and the town would not be where it is today without Mrs. Pratt having served on this board and her, her work at uh, the state level uh, through the MPO and all the other things she did in town. Um, I was on the board when we named uh, the Pratt Trail uh, in her honor uh, down off of uh, Fruit Street near the playing fields. 
And uh, every time I drive by that, going out to the fields for various games and things, I love seeing her name up there. And uh, uh, I will miss her a great deal. Uh, she was just a great woman. Uh, when my dad died, she was really good to me. And uh, she's, she was a great asset to the community. And uh, I know she's in heaven now uh, looking down, saying, get on with it. We've got work to do here tonight at the board level. So uh, I will miss her. And uh, she was a good friend. So I'm going to just quickly build on that, and then we're going to go to town for uh, you know the public forum. <clears throat> when we went through the process and renamed the uh, the road going into the Fruit Street Fields, uh, Pratt is a Pratt Way or Pratt Road, wh whatever it is. The however we named it, uh, I I did remember how we named it, and I went into work the next day, and I sat down on her bed, and I go, Mary, uh, get some good news for you. She looked at me with those, you know, it could have been pitch black in there. She still had her tinted glasses on. And she <laughs> stares at me. She says, what's the good news? <clears throat> I'm getting out of here. Said, well, <laughs> we renamed the access road going into Fruit Street Fields after you and your family's name. And she wasn't paying attention. She looked at me. She goes, is that all the town has to worry about? Is that stupid road? <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, to know Mary was definitely to love her. Um, it's nice that, uh, you know, she had a nice long life and she had a very supportive and loving family around her all the time. Um, and she really, uh, she definitely left Hopkins in a better place uh, with her being here and, and she will be tremendously missed. So, uh, that said. If I may throw the chair. Yes, Mr. Kamala, please. Yes. Um, just to add to the comments from Mr. Ted Stone and Mr. Hare, I worked for the town of Wesley, as well as the towns of Walpole and Westford. I can assure you that uh, Mrs. Pratt was a very capable, dedicated, commitment, uh, no, committed, and accomplished advocate for community Hockington. We had uh, several projects of significant impact in Wesley that we discussed as part of perhaps a five, six town uh, consortium. And every meeting, whether Hopkinton was on the agenda or not, Mrs. Pratt showed up and represented Hopkinton's interests extremely well and effectively. And that's why when I joined the town, I was very thrilled to see that she, uh, although she had come off the board, she volunteered uh, to continue as the town's representative uh, at the MPO as well as MAPC levels. And I can remember multiple trips that she took uh, with John Westerling all the way to Boston to continue to represent and fight for what she believed were the best interests of community Hopkinton. May yeah. I? Yep. Just uh, Mary uh, was a mentor of mine, but um, I met her through her sister, actually. Her sister was a friend of mine from Natick, Joanne O'Brien. And uh, we found that we had this Native connection, and it was very nice. But I really got to know Mary through the state agencies that she went to as a, as a selectman and as someone from Hoppington. She didn't just stay in Hoppington. She kept Hoppington viable in many, many different state agencies and, and different state projects. And I, I know we went to uh, Suasco water meetings together. And we would every once in a while meet at 495 Technology Carter meetings. And because um, we had seven towns, so we had a lot of meetings outside of, of Hopkinton. And that's where I actually worked, did more work with Mary than, than here in town. But we were always friends. And she was just wonderful to know and very dedicated person to Hoppington. OK. John. Yeah, I, 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 you know, it's what, what more could be said. You know, Mary, uh, this this town is what it is because of her, the, the work she did on the state level. Um, she used to come to the uh, planning board meetings, and then then at one point she just stopped coming. I said, "What's wrong?" She said, "Just to, to, to Brenda's point, nothing interesting." 
you know, I'm not going to come if it's not interesting. You guys do something good? I'll come. But, you know, she was just great. She would call me up when stuff was coming up. John, I want you to think about this. <laughs> just like my mother would. And my mother would say, listen to Mary. So, we did. Yep. But, uh, you know, thank you. Good. Yep, she'll be missed. All right, so now we will go to public forum. If there are anyone, is there anyone in the uh, like to share their ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government, please come up. Seeing none, good. Uh, consent, not good, but okay. I think we have some people kind of squirming in their seats out there. If you're here to speak during public comment, you should walk forward now. Well, uh, hello, Select Board. Thank you for, uh, for letting us speak to you today. We're all students from the Hopkinton High School. I'm the class of 2021 president, David Stett. This is our vice president, Tommy Bernardin. And this is Declan Herr. He's been a huge leader in the initiative we're here to talk to you today about, which is acquiring a Boston Marathon bib for our class. So you, might got, uh, you guys may not know that we're the biggest grade to ever enter Hopkinton High School. And although it's, it's great to meet so many different people, it does require us to do a whole lot more fundraising than traditionally. We're juniors, we have our prom coming up very soon, and next year we have our senior week, which is um, a week to celebrate our four years of high school. And uh, a marathon bib would um, extremely, um, it'd be extremely beneficial. It'd allow us to raise so much money to uh, maximize the potential of these events. They're all, um, these events are uh, determined by us. We, we must fund them, so um, yeah. Uh, classes of 2019 and 2018 have been able to um, acquire a bib in the past. Their school events were very successful, and we'd love to be on track to do the same thing as them. Um, yeah, thank you for your time and for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yes. Gentlemen, keep the buildings. Okay. Come on up. A little quicker. <laughs> Hi. Um, we're representatives for, for BPA and Robotics Club at the high school, and we're just really thankful to the select board and to the Boston Athletics Association for their past donations. So in 2017, we got $8,000, and then last year, um, we got $5,000, and we're just really thankful because that money has really helped our programs grow. Hi, my name is Tiffany Ramsran. I'm here on behalf of Business Professionals of America. I'm currently serving as the state president and a board, of direct, a board member on the board of directors. And I really wanted to appreciate all of you guys for um, allowing us to raise this, have this money. Uh, to, and we're going to be using this towards BPA Nationals, which I know has definitely made an impact on my life as I've attended the last two years. And this upcoming year, we will be going to Washington, D.C., and this will make a huge impact on making, on giving these kids a better experience and further their careers in business and beyond. Yep. Yeah, hi, so I'm Fisher Sudaman. Uh, we re we're requesting two bibs for BPA and robotics. Uh, so, as she said, BPA requires uh, funding for nationals, and we require robotics for the Robotics World Championship held in Kentucky. So, last year, two teams, 2602H and 2602A, 26.2 kind of represented uh, Hopkinton at the world stage. So like, we, did re we performed really well, and we'd like to have the opportunity to do that again next year. And like we really need funding for parts, and it really costs a lot to go there, travel, hotel, all that stuff. So like the funding really could help a lot. I'm Jacob Morrow, and uh, we already have two runners ready right now. And we, um, if we get a bib, we'd be very thankful, and we would be willing to help another group by giving them our second runner. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you for hearing us. It is. <laughs> What's up, guys? Hi. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the Boston Athletic Association and the Select Board for letting us speak today. Uh, I'm Barat McCullough, and I'm the Vice President of the Class of 2023. And this is Neil Abraham. He's our treasurer. So we came here today to put in our ticket for a Boston Marathon bib because one of our class advisors, Cheryl Elder, you may know her, she has done this fundraiser in the past, and she's found it very successful for our class. And it'll help us slowly build up to future events like prom and senior week that uh, the junior class talked about before. Uh, so as freshmen, we're just arriving. So uh, getting a marathon bib 
would be a, a good sum of money which would really give us a head start uh, for fundraising over the next four years. Uh, in addition to this, uh, Marathon Bibs in the past, uh, they help build like a sense of community which is something that our class and our fellow class officers are really trying to promote. Uh, like uh, students will go and support the runner and people will rally around that one person which, uh, which, really, helps, uh, which really helps us meet our goal of um, creating a heightened sense of community and creating a more spirited environment. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, fellas. Oh, what class? What class oh, do you guys remind me? Okay, twenty right. twenty. Yep. All right. Come on up. Thank you to the select board for allowing me to speak today. My name is Lauren Gaynor, and I am here on behalf of Ron Clark and the National Brain Tumor Society. Brain tumors are the leading uh, cause of cancer-related deaths in children under the age of 19. And the five-year survival rate of glioblastoma is 5.5%. This is the same disease that took the lives of Senator McCain, Beau Biden, and Ted Kennedy. This is also the same brain tumor that took the life of Hopkinton resident Tracy Clinton after only nine months. Tracy who? Clinton. Um, Tracy was a parent and best friend to her daughter, Abby a Boston 2020 hopeful. Abby says that she is determined to make her mother proud in all aspects of her life, especially through the Boston Marathon, not only to run 26.2 miles, but also to raise $10,000 in support of the National Brain Tumor Society. Abby goes on to say that growing up in Hopkinton, Mass, the marathon has always been part of my identity in life, but it was not really until that I had the goal of running it because I honestly didn't think that I could do it. It's my mom's voice in my head telling me that I can do anything I set my mind to. She had always wanted to run it, so I think if I can help her live that dream, I would be beyond happy. Raising the money for this charity would mean everything to my family, friends, and support system. There is no cause I would feel as passionate to raise money for, knowing that the funds will go to an organization that exists to discover a cure, deliver effective treatments, and advocate for patients and care partners. If I can play even a small role in preventing other families from feeling the pain and effects of a brain tumor on a loved one, I will feel accomplished. We ask for you today to consider giving not only the National Brain Tumor Society a bib to the 2020 Boston Marathon, but to give Abby this opportunity to run this race, this 26.2 miles, in memory of her mother, Hopkinton resident, Tracy Clinton. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. So we've had several requests for bib numbers. I think each of the groups came up. I didn't hear bib each time, but I think that's what all those were. Uh, just so everyone understands, we've got a few other things we have to get to per the agenda that was published, and then we'll come back to this issue that a lot of people raised. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> all right. So moving on to the consent agenda. Uh, so the select board will consider approving the 11, 19, and 22 select board meeting minutes. Uh, that was one. Number two is request for the extension of hours of New Year's Eve Hopkins Center for the Arts, Inc. Um, would any member like to break out the items? I need to break out item two just for one quick question, please. Okay. So I will um, request a motion to approve the remaining consent agenda item. So moved. Second. Okay. Any further Second. discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Staying it carries, okay. Mr. Herr. Mr. Kamalo, um, item two in the consent agenda is the request for extension of hours on New Year's Eve for Hopkins Center for the Arts from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. It's New Year's Eve, makes all the sense in the world. Is that outside of what our current town-wide policy is and is this the right way to do this? Through the chair, it is within the hours specified uh, by the town's alcohol policy. For the overall town, but outside their current lease it slash license agreement that we have in place yes okay. i'm good okay uh, so i will request a motion to approve the remaining consent agenda item so moved second uh, any further discussion hearing none all in favor aye all aye. opposed aye. abstain carries okay thank you uh, let's see public hearing 650 
Change of ownership request, I mean interest, uh, Start Line Brewery. Select Board will hold a public hearing regarding an application from John P. Connell, Esquire, on behalf of Craft Life Brewing Company, LLC DBA Start Line Brewing Company, 151 R. Hayden Row in Hopkinton, for a change of ownership interest. Applicant is adding 11 new members, investors, and is not otherwise changing the operation of the business. Hours of operation will remain Monday through Friday, 11A to 10P, Saturday and Sunday, 10A to 10P. Um, Mr. Chair, I move that we open the public hearing as stipulated. Okay. 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 Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? Good. Carries. Public hearing is open. Sorry I'm a little bit late on that. Um, Mr. Kamalu. Yes. Um, through the Chair, uh, with your permission, we'll invite the applicant uh, to join the board, please. Um, we did, we did uh, circulate the application to both the town's review departments as well as town council. We did not receive any adverse comments. Uh, also, uh, this is a, a, a routine but somewhat unusual application to come before the board. Uh, the bulk of the review is done by the ABCC. Mr. Chair, yes. Full disclosure. Mm -hmm. On occasion, I purchase certain products from Mr. Twinney. <laughs> yes. And uh, while I don't have a financial interest, uh, I guess there is a financial interest in it. It's negative. <laughs> uh, I don't think I need to recuse myself, nor do you. <laughs> or me. But you know, the board goes in and hangs out there on occasion, not collectively, but as individuals. Never and more so, than two. Uh, I just want to put that out there that. Uh, I do purchase some products, but I don't want to recuse myself. Okay, I feel the exact same way. However, I feel slighted that I was not considered an investor. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good portion of, although I do it generally, I do it remotely from a, an establishment in the center of town. Your, your votes count. Thank yes. you very much. Yes, yeah, so, um, all right. So, Mr. Twinney. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on? Sure. Well, this is really, as, as Norman First said, all, thank you. I should say, everyone, thank you very much uh, for your time. Appreciate the, the select board's time and the review of our administrative uh, application here. Some changes uh, required by the state ABCC department routed through the town of Hopkinton as the approval of our pouring permit uh, to just simply reflect the current makeup of the ownership of our organization. So as we've gone through the year and we're getting ready to renew licenses, I believe even later today, we wanted to get all of our administrative work in order uh, and aligned with the state, disclosing all the investors and their required paperwork, quarry forms and uh, uh, bank source of funds for the investment in our company. As you know, we've spent some money down the street uh, remodeling and making it very nice that the response and turnout has been amazing for uh, us through the community. We're very grateful for that, but uh, this is just an administrative step okay. to, to get everything in order with uh, the paperwork for the state. Good. So, Mr. Kamalu, everything, all the paperwork that Mr. Twenty has submitted uh, is good, and ever, uh, are there any stumbling blocks or stipulations on what he submitted, or are we ready for a vote? I believe uh, I th the board should be ready for a vote. Well, we're Closer, close the hearing. Y yes. Um, two issues that we looked at. One was the, whether the application is complete. We concluded it was. Um, the second issue we looked at was um, whether there were any new individuals that the board uh, would perhaps consider f um, uh, individuals who would require additional review based on their history and character. I believe the application that was presented to the board uh, indicated in the forms attached to the application that all the individuals were of suitable character to hold an interest in the license. Good. And as I said earlier, uh, the APCC will look further into this if there are any issues. Okay. Uh, any board members have anything else for Mr. Twenty? On the team was all positive. Yep. So. And on the license <coughs> for the same establishment later on this evening, that license is in order to that process, correct? Correct. Okay. I'm good. Okay. So uh, I will accept a motion to close the public hearing. Should we go to the public? So moved. Move? We definitely should go to the public. So before I close that, would anyone in attendance like to make a comment or ask a question? Seeing and hearing none. 
Uh, I will accept a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, abstain, carries. Uh, board deliberation, is there any board deliberation? Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the change of ownership and interest in Startline Brewing Company as stipulated this evening. Second. Okay, any further discussion on that motion? Mr. Kamal, is that motion in order? Yes, it is. Okay, hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Carries. Thank you, Mr. Twenty. Thank you, Ted. Someday, come down and have another soda at your place. <laughs> the soda is exquisite there. Can I make a suggestion business-wise? Sure. Before the end of the uh, uh, Christmas season, and sitting as a chair, I can say Christmas without worrying about if I'm going to offend people. Uh, maybe a um, showing, I, I know that I was down there to watch a movie, a few, uh, I believe it was the Blues Brothers. Yes. Uh, Christmas Vacation may be a big, a big <laughs> pull. <laughs> we will consider a screening. Or at the very least, Scrooged. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right, so we are now on to the 2020 Marathon Invitational Random Distribution. The Select Board will hold a public random distribution of Marathon Invitational entries to qualified applicants for the 2020 Boston Marathon. Uh, Mr. Kamalo, do you have anything on this? Yes. Um, it needs to be said, this is one of the most successful um, civic programs that the town has put forth. Um, each year uh, the program has um, exponentially increased the uh, financial benefits accruing to community organizations and also each year we have uh, an increasing or increased need for invitational entries. Uh, it is turning out to be a very popular program amongst civic organizations in town. And therefore, not surprisingly, um, this year we have 38 organizations who have applied for the invitational entries. Uh, based on last year's distribution, uh, 25 out of the 50 invitational entries are earmarked for town departments. And thus, this leaves us with 25 uh, invitational entries that are being sought by 38 organizations. Uh, this is not going to be an easy process for, for the board. However, uh, as the board has done in prior years, uh, this is the opportunity to discuss how you're going to distribute these invitational entries. Thank you, Mr. Kamala. I will continue if I move to the chair. Sure. I, I will continue like I do every year to fight to get as many as possible from, from the BAA as the liaison. Um, a few years ago, um, we were actually going to get cut and we got back up to the 50 number again. And uh, we will continue to try and get as many as possible. Mr. Katina, you, will, you do an absolutely wonderful job advocating for the town through the BAA as that special liaison. So thank, thank you. you very much. I like to make fun of you a lot, but uh, that's kind of a serious note. Mr. Chair. Yes. So I just want to clarify one thing as I saw a couple of eyes perk up there a minute ago. So we get 50 numbers from the BAA to distribute, okay? 25 of them, as Mr. Kamala stated, go to town departments. It's not like they go to town departments and then their kids get to run the Boston Marathon uh, or things like that. They go to town departments like police and fire, and police and fire use those numbers to get other volunteers to come in and help us on the day of the marathon. So the numbers are used as part of the management process of the Boston Marathon start line efforts here in Hopkinton. Uh, it's not a personal uh, uh, windfall, if you will, for uh, the fire chief. He does not run the Boston Marathon. He gets a bunch of numbers, but he doesn't run it. So they're used for raise to help the town manage this process which is a huge undertaking, as we all know, living in town uh, each April. So that's where those 25 go. And it's the next 25 that we're going to try and sort out here. So my first question, uh, Mr. Chair, or to uh -huh. Mr. Kamalo, whomever, uh, is how many of the 38 organizations seek and receive numbers from other means that we're aware of? Five. 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 <clears throat> 
meaning five bibs or five organizations? Or do we don't know? Five organizations. Five organizations. Five organizations. Which organizations are they, please? They are. Um, I have the list. So Bay Path Humane Society. Yep. Do we know where they get them from, the other ones? Um, no. Okay. Hopkins Center for the Arts. Okay. Uh, they get, uh, so Bay Path gets one. Nine. Hopkins Center for the Arts gets nine. Um, Life is Good Playmakers gets one. Semper Fi Fund gets 15. Mm -hmm. That's it. And those are coming from the BAA directly to those organizations. Yep. So that would be my first area that I think we need to look at because Agreed. we have more applications than we have. Yep. And of the, of all the, of the 38 organizations, Mr. Kamal, how many of those are Hopkinton based organizations? In a minute, I will count. One, two. Excluding the five that we've already identified? Correct. Okay. One, two. I'm just trying to do some basic math yep. here. If we have 38 minus five, we have 33. Yep. And we're trying to get to 25. Absolutely. So Six. Absolutely. But I know there's some really great organizations out there that while they're not Hopkinton based, that they're still great organizations. That's, I'm not trying to do that. Roughly Roughly thirty two. Roughly thirty two are Hopkinton based. Are Hopkinton based organizations. Yes. So there's only one, if you take the first five out, at least 33. So you're saying there's only one that's a non-Hopkinton based organization? Yeah, per my count, rough count, yes. Or a, Hop or a Hopkinton, are you counting connection or how is it you're looking at that? Specifically, appropriately named a Hopkinton organization. They have Hopkinton in their name. Got it, which one is the not non one? It's the... Cancer. Yeah, it's the. It's the brain cancer organization. Uh, yeah, hold one second. I'll get the... Mr. Kamala, was that New England Food and Dairy Council, Hopkins and based? Carly. Yes, that's the one. That's the one I didn't count. So that's New not. England. Yes, New England Food and Dairy Council. That's the one that is not. Yeah. Okay, so that leaves one. So that's six. If we were to. Mm -hmm. So that leaves. And us I'm not saying, Mr. Chair, this is not my I input know. on a decision. I'm just trying to whittle through this a little bit. Brian, you are 25 percent of the board tonight. Normally. 20. I know. I'm usually 20. This is a normally promotion. Point. I'm excited. <laughs> that's what you get. You get. Actually, heavyweight. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. So, I think we can probably start. So we, ha we have a, a roster in front of us. So I think we can probably start by maybe picking off some of the low hanging fruit. People that are Hopkins and based that have done a good job before um, and that have reapplied for, for a number. I think first of all, we need to, to go out and say with, there are a lot of agencies, a lot of, a lot of groups here that have requested more than one number. I think we can all agree that nobody's gonna get more than one number. The people that get there, numbers are going to get no more than one number. Is that agreed through the board? Yes, I agree. Okay, so we'll start there. So I'm going to look at, let's start going down the list, and I'm going to look at the organization, and their, their, we have their history, and these are just on the, the ones that, that have, we're not going to touch the ones that, that are new this year. 
So the Live for Evan Incorporated, for example, um, one bib, $9,400 last year. Uh, and they've been doing it since 2014, and they've been very successful. 2017, they had oh, just about $18,000 raised. So uh, I see no reason why we wouldn't uh, substantiate them with a, with a number. Okay. So, Mr. Kamalo, are, are we going to go charity by charity and vote yes? In, Is that how you want it? it, it Almost there. If you give me a couple seconds, I may have an idea to add to Mr. Hare's okay. suggestion. Okay. Just want to confirm the numbers. One of my concerns, while you're doing that, Mr. Kamala, one of my concerns would be um, as we look at the organization and their success in the past. Yep. Um, we've got a couple of newer organizations mm -hmm. that are the same in the different class, the kids, you know, the kids have a yep. different class. So these kids didn't raise the money, but their predecessors right. did and so on. So, right. Um, Okay. So the typical value of a Boston Marathon number, uh, and uh, some of you may know, some may not, obviously. Uh, I ran the Boston Marathon 30 years raising funds for Dana-Farber Cancer Research. And the average value across the entire charity program for the BAA is about $8,400 now for funds raised per bit. Mm -hmm. So that's, we don't sell the number, but that's the kind of the... Uh, uh, the expectation of the market for the number, if you will, through the charity program. So it's a big opportunity. It's a big responsibility, though, to live up to that, mm -hmm. right? So if you're used to raising 500 bucks for something, the value of the number, if you get one, is $8,400. So keep that in mind as you think through how you're going to raise yep. this. And there's different means, like, you know, the Dana-Farber group are going to go and, and they're going to, they have the ability to raise a heck of a lot more money. That, I'm sure that brings that up, whereas, you know, in days past, you might have the respite centers setting up a, a table at the, at Colella selling cookies and they might make 500 bucks on the weekend or something like that. And so, so the, you know, the, the size of the cookie jar that they're pulling from are, are generally different. <clears throat> However, I think uh, as kind of a benchmark, I think it's safe to use, I think in the, historically we've used $5,000. That's correct. Um, so I think that what we should do is, so we'll start, we'll start banging out some of this low-hanging fruit. Um, first of all, are we all in agreement that the charities or organizations here that have bids from another organization would be off the table for us? That's my thought. I think so. Okay. Um, it's just that, that one that has the, the, the Hopkinton run it. The one that has the Hopkinton yeah. runner. Is that the Ron Clark one? Yeah. That, that, because, you know, she's running for her mother. And, and that's, you know, some of these things. You know, they don't have numbers coming from other organizations. They, yeah, they actually do. Do they? The BAA? Yep. yep. Two. However, let's table it. That's not our, that's not our low hanging fruit. Like, let's, let's get a, a majority of these off our roster right now that we can, and, and then uh, and we can go. Yeah, because you know the, the BAA actually believes that the numbers are worth not only four hundred but but ten thousand dollars, and that's 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 the the number that that they throw out to me when I go to request more numbers, uh, and um, uh, they they look at what uh, what we raise and they they say well you know there are other organizations that uh, raise more than Hopkinton does. And that's one of the things I have to fight about. So. Is the board in agreement that the Live for Evan Incorporated, with their history, that we would be inclined to give them a number? I would be. Yes. So, Mr. Kamalo, just procedurally. Why don't we just put a straw package together, if you will, and then see what we end up with. You know what I mean? Okay. But not voted, per se. Okay. You still may have to massage a little bit. All right. So I'll do. Yeah. Want me to describe? Yeah. Jobs. You are my total parliamentarian. Live for Evan is on the straw list. Point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, e Hop last year was their first year. They 6,200, so they should probably be on the list. Uh, the Hopkin and PTA, they raised 5,000. The Keep Smiling for Abby, that's an absolute no brainer. Um, 12,000, almost almost 13,000 last year, and historically they've never been under $6,200, so that's a no-brainer. Um, 
Uh, Hopkins Boys uh, Youth Lacrosse, eight thousand bucks last year. That's a no-brainer. So Hot Boys Lacs. <laughs> yep. Um, so I'm going to leave off the Hopkins and Women's Club because uh, historically they have not come up with a with a large number. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're done. It just means that they're not yeah, on the building the star yep. list. Yeah. Um, the Hop Hopkins Public Library Friends Incorporated. Uh, they've always been 6,000 to 6,600 over the last eight years, nine years, sorry. Uh, Interstage Left, that was $6,000 last year. Uh, Friends of Hopkinton, absolutely no brainer. So, Friends of Hopkinton, it's yes. the celebration group? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely no brainer there. Um, the Hopkinton Music Association. Hang on one sec, please. Yep. Um, Hopkinson Music Association. Yep. What was their number? They were at 7275 last year. Um, the, Hop the Friends of Hopkinson SPEAC Incorporated. What is that? Um, Special Ed? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so they've always, I mean, they were. 17, 18, 16, 17, 18, they didn't do great, but last year they were uh, 5,600, so I'd say we throw them on there. Hopkins Little League, 7,500, no brainer. Um, Hopkins Tax Relief Committee, they're in there at 5,000. Mr. Kamalo, on that one, the Hopkins Tax Relief Committee, that's a, that's a municipal entity, right? Is that correct? Yes, and they serve a very strong purpose in town where over the years we have seen a growing need to access that fund. Uh, at staff level, we have also worked with the committee to identify other funding sources for that organization. However, they really need the numbers. I'm, I'm, but that I'm fund is also funded by, I'm not. I'm not advocating for or against it, I'm just trying to understand it. But that fund is also supported by taxpayers as well. Well, fully Vol voluntarily. voluntarily. If they can't raise money. Got it. So this is a volunteer fund. Yeah, only if they sign a thing and send okay. a donation to them. Uh, Sharon Timlin, they're good. There were 6,000, 6,000, 18, 19. Um, Uh, let's see. The Hopkinton Public Library there. They, they didn't make three. the 5,000. Yeah, they didn't make the 5,000. I, I have a question though. There's three. There's like the Friends of the Library, there's Hopkinton Public Library, and, the, uh, and Hopkinton Public Library, and this foundation. So there's three separate mm -hmm. groups in which the money goes to the library. Okay. I mean, I don't know how you want it. This one you're not including on the straw list at this point, though? I'm not including that on the straw list. Okay. They, they did not get to the 5,000. Um, the Hopkinton Education Foundation, they did historically, and they have since 2014. Um, Friends of Hopkinton Seniors, that doesn't doesn't get to the straw poll. Hopkins and Historical Society does. Uh, so the next two, not the next two, I'm sorry. So Hopkinton Historical Society. Yes. Got it. So we've got Project Just Because and Hopkins and Food, pa Food Pantry, mm -hmm. both run by Cheryl Ann Lambert Walsh. I have a feeling that they're similar. Are, are, are they the, is, are Cheryl Ann Lambert Walsh here? Uh, we are from Project Just Because. Okay. Uh, come on up for just a quick second. <laughs> so because I'm, we're, we're trying to kind of cull the herd as, as, as efficiently as we can here so we can get into some numbers. Um, is there, can you tell me what the differentiation is between Hopkinner Food Pantry and Project Just Because? Um, just the Hopkinton Food Pantry is housed in the same building, but the Hopkinton Food Pantry is a program that serves Hopkinton residents only. Project Just Because ha does other things that 
serves Hopkinton residents as well as anybody from the state. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you. So. So they made the five thousand dollars right at the five thousand dollar number. However, I'm just a little. If we're looking at Hopkinton versus Hopkinton versus Hopkinton, the food pantry serves just Hopkinton, right? Whereas mm -hmm. just because serves Hopkinton and and other entities. So I would tend to probably lump those two together, and if I were going to lump those two together and choose one, I would choose Hopkinton Food Pantry. But uh, they're new this year. The food yeah. pantry is new this year. Got it, Mr. So, Chair. So how many up to on the straw? I don't know. We're at 16, Mr. Kamal. Yes, yeah. Mr. Chair. I have another suggestion, if I may. Um, I, I do understand the board's desire to look at the funds raised. Mm -hmm. Um, I had an opportunity to work for Oxfam America, and working for Oxfam, I learned one thing, that um, different organizations have different fundraising capabilities, mm -hmm. but that in itself does not take away the purpose right. and the need. And against that background, I have a suggestion. If the board can identify perhaps two from the 32 organizations that we, 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 we have listed, two that can be uh, eliminated whichever way you want to, mm -hmm. we can then go to the town department list and perhaps ask also town departments to take less numbers. The reason being, this program was set up to do exactly what you see tonight. Support local organizations. And also, if there's a way to build up their institutional capacity for fund development, that we do so. And that's why I'm really trying to make sure that everybody who has stepped forward and expressed the need is catered for. And one way we could do that is to adjust the numbers that are going to town departments. And I have a proposal how that could be done. Okay. Yeah. So out of these 32 yes. that we have remaining. Yes. If we eliminate two, I can settle this. All right. So I think we can probably eliminate two. Can I ask a question, though? You just did. Uh, well, not a second. Mr. Kamalo, but back to what we were talking about earlier with the 25 and 25, yeah. and I'm not opposed to your suggestion or trying to figure that out, um, but we can't jeopardize what we need to manage the business of the day, if you will, too, by getting these other towns and commit, you know, organizations to send, send the troops, if you will. Yeah. Uh, do you... Would that be of concern to you, or do you think we've got enough wiggle room there? I think we have enough wiggle room. For example, um, I'm very sensitive to mm. the support offered to the police department. I'm also sensitive to the support that comes in through the marathon committee. Um, I, I'm leaving the marathon committee untouched. However, I'm, I'm proposing um, that we reduce the police numbers from 12 to 10, uh, the fire department numbers from 3 to 2, uh, the senior center numbers from three to two, and then the Hopkinton Public Library from two to one. I'm sorry, what was the last one? Hopkinton or what? Public Library from two to one? Yeah. Does the fire department get numbers directly from the BAA as well as these numbers here, or is that past practice over? Strictly, yeah, they strictly these numbers. And, and he stepped up for the chair, if I may. Uh, and, and I gotta say that Steve stepped up two years ago. He, they had five, and he gave two back to us. Um, and said that, that they could work with just the three um, and make it make it work. Mr. Kamala, in those 32 that we have, have we removed New England Food and Dairy Council from that? Is that one of the ones that we've removed? Yeah, yeah it was five. It was yeah, five I, and then yeah I believe so, yes. We've removed, so we removed that one. Yeah. So, just kind of quickly looking at some of these, um, I suppose... If I were inclined to just kind of randomly throw a dart and, and, and choose one, I would say we would probably not, um, I would not say we probably, not, I would 
probably hold off on the freshman class this year, getting a number because uh, <coughs> they could they can come back and come back next year and fund their prom well, we, or, or whatever. Why don't we just you know look look ahead and just say that well we can always give one to the senior class to pay for that senior trip to pay for the well the junior so we've given it to the oh so, the junior class so for the senior to the senior, senior class or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so 2018 and 19 have gotten no 19 and 20 have gotten them. You guys are 21. Okay. So 19 and 20 have gotten them, so they're they're not here. So I think that it's fair to say, okay, give it to the junior class, and that can help fund their prom and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, in a perfect world, we'd have you know 200 more of these numbers, and uh, but and and it's not to diminish the generosity of the BAA, uh, but in a perfect world, we would say yes, everyone wants four. Why don't we give everyone ten? Um, but. Um, it's not going to happen. I, so, was, I was thinking the same. Uh, I have a freshman in high school. I have a junior in high school. You got one so in every grade. You got 15 uh, kids. Uh, <laughs> but I think, I think the, uh, the your suggestion is logical for past based on past practice. Probably also a little bit based on kind of what they're doing, sort of as they get organized. Uh, maybe they could come back next year. We got a different setup, but I would support that. Okay. So, so I. I what are we doing here? I don't know what we do. Do we need a motion to strike one? No? Not, not, not at this point. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so my straw poll so is, is, is going to be one more. class of 23X. Um, and then kind of just going through our list like we have. Um, so the, Ho the Hopkins Public Library Foundation, they're already getting two or one, depending on what, what we do here. Plus, they've got other charities here um, giving to them. I think it's, I think it's very, I would have a hard time pulling some, something that, that doesn't have, um, like getting rid of one of these organizations that they were only gonna get one, whereas this is getting, the library's getting more than one, or actually more From than two. From different angles. Yeah. Um, I know, but they are different entities yeah. and different volunteers yep. and yep, different are. purpose within the library, but... I, I but they're all under the same umbrella. Yep. So, um, so that's the... Is anyone from the library or any one of these organizations here? Yeah, let's, let's identify the organizations. It's the Hopkinton Public Library Friends, and we also have Foundation. the Hopkinton Public Library Foundation. And then the public library. And, then and the library gets one through the town department. Well, the account. Yes. We cut that from two to one. Yeah. We still got one. No, no, because they were not in our five that get numbers from elsewhere. There's, you said there's the library itself. Yep. There's the friends and there's the foundation. Correct. But the library itself also gets one through the other side. Correct? They were getting two, but we're now proposing one. Is that, okay, this is where it gets confusing. Yeah. Is that the one on this hand, or is that the? Uh, town side. The town side. Town so they are getting side. one on this side, so then they should be getting one on this side if we stick to the same concept. Right? I don't see where they're getting one from the They don't to do it. Yeah. It should have been six that were getting a number elsewhere of the 38. If the library is getting a number from the town side, Right. And the library submitted another application to us for these other 25. No, they did not submit another application. Well, which group are we talking about now? They are three different. Oh, okay. Yeah, there are three oh, different. Yes, yeah, there, there are three different entities associated with the library that have applied. There's the library department. There's the foundation, and then there's the friends of the library. But, oh, the so there are three different. Yeah. The library department. Yes. And then there's the foundation. All right, you're up. Right. Here's the director of the library. <laughs> yes, I, I have turned in an application for two bibs. Okay. And the Friends and Foundation also have each turned in their own application for bibs. This is how we've historically done it. Mm -hmm. Historically, the Friends have gotten a bib. The Foundation has gotten a bib. The library has gotten two, which we then split between the Friends and Foundation. And I don't know what numbers you were looking at earlier. I just want the, the bibs that we have been responsible for, that we have given um, out in the last, uh, I, this goes back to six years, I'm looking at my own application. Um, 
collectively brought in about a little more than 10,000 last year, a little more than 10,000 the year after, before that. Um, for how about, many bibs? For two bibs. So it's averaging out to about 5,000. Foundation typically is able to do a little bit more. They have mm -hmm. a bigger fundraising apparatus. The friends are a little more modest, but they still do very well for themselves. Yep. They bring in a few thousand. So. Okay. So, so back to my question a minute ago, and I could be the one that's not figuring this out quickly. <laughs> the library, Heather. Yes. This woman runs the library has a number from Mr. Kamala already, correct? Correct. And then the foundation and the friends are seeking other numbers. Correct. As well as Heather submitted another application for two additional no. numbers. No. no. Okay, that's right. I submitted a single application so for two numbers. So there's a total of three. So there's a total of three. Play right yes. now for the library. And the total request is for four bibs, and I think Norman is suggesting three, so that the library gets one through the departmental um, appropriation only and we would have to decide which of our affiliate groups to um, to enable to fundraise with that can you make that decision for us <laughs> <laughs> I probably don't want to do it in a public televised yeah, meeting. Well, we're, 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 we're closer to the heart there. Yeah. Like, yes I would I would need to sit down and talk with with my chairs. Can you do that in 15 minutes? <laughs> when they, we, when we, looks like we have one they are here. I mean, one option is to give the live. If, if you, I obviously, I would love it if you wanted to give us two bibs and each of my affiliate groups one bib. They do great work and, and they could always use the funding. You have an option to give us two bibs and let us split. You have an option to give me one bib and each of them one, and then I um, go figure out behind the scenes which is the best organization, you know, who has the runners lined up. Um, or, or we could give the foundation one, the friends one, mm -hmm. and when we have our budget conversation, you can look at us square in the eye and say, you owe me five grand, <laughs> and we can do it that way. If that's a promise. Oh, we can promise that you can look us in the eye and say that. It doesn't yeah. mean that you're going to get any more money. <laughs> But I mean, the library is a taxpayer right. entity, uh, yeah. right? So, it is. I, I so the, yeah, the funding that, that gets raised with these bibs goes to our affiliate groups, the friends of the foundation that then give it back to the library by supporting our programs and services and collections. Okay. So you're saying so if we gave you two at Hoppington Public Library, you would see that one, each of them get one or that one of them gets one? If I had two bibs, I would give two. one to each so organization. So we just cross equally. out both of them and, and put two back on the public library side. Well, I think in oh, terms of that exactly. location and public documentation and everything else, yeah. we give it to the two groups and we don't give any to the, exactly. to the town department and say, we'll talk to you at budget time. But that's well, maybe just about Mr. Kamala, budget stuff. It's not about what they master do. master negotiator, when he goes to that police department, and However, squeezes them from 12 to 10, maybe he goes 12 to 9. No. You never know. I know, but in, in Mr. Kamala 19, was pretty, this a pretty good negotiator. The foundation only brought in this much, and well, it's the other one. I checked off the other one too. They didn't bring it, they brought it. Last year, yeah, so if, it was 25 if, to 25. If, oh, no, so right. easy. If I may, I threw the chair. So, Obviously, so this mental health collaborative, they're Hopkin and based. I'm, I'm looking at the new ones. Hopkin and Girls Youth Across, absolutely. Hopkin and Community Partnership, Hopkin, Hopkin and Food Pantry, yes. Life is Good Playmakers. Uh, they're off because they already got another bib. New England Dairy Council, they're gone. Um, Hopkin, uh, no, they're there. That's there. Would you like us to continue? Here, or are you good with the library? No, I think it's there for you. May I speak, <laughs> What's, uh, what May I speak quickly yes. for the friends, or am I out of order? Oh, um, I'm here representing the friends of the library, okay. and I'm in my 11th year as treasurer. Um, just quickly, we do three fundraisers a year, two book sales, the uh, Apple Crisp at Poly Arts. Um, I won't bore you with my entire list, which I was prepared to go down. We support alone 25 museum passes. We've taken over all the passes, even the ones that the McGovern used to cover, which gives Heather that much more money in her budget. Um, a young adult, we in our budget have $1,500 a year for children's room, a thousand. Um, those are just the ones that are kind of set in stone. I honestly think in the 11 years that I've been treasurer, I don't think we've ever turned down a request. Um, 
again, I will try not to bore you or take up too much time, but we've bought podiums, we've bought um, equipment, sound equipment, um, oh my gosh, the telescope, it goes on and on and on. So I am just here in defense of the Friends of the Library. Uh, we give away more just for museum passes um, than we fundraise. I'm sure you all know that of our three fundraisers, we're kind of famous for our apple crisp. And I have more figures if you want them, but I don't want to take more time than is our due. So. And your organization is volunteer driven, correct? Absolutely. Mr. Chair, I would suggest that the board continue with the two organizations that are volunteer driven and at the town department that we are obligated all of us in the community to support is our library which is killing it doing a great job over there uh, we'll figure other ways out for funding that good i'm good with that so i would take that out of your list board. which gives us good with that the 30 mm -hmm. so we need over two. here we're good now one each we were at 32 what about the, the library and the um what was the other one that got us the third Hopkinton class of 23. Uh, freshman class. Sorry, so guys. In that list, is the Hopkins and Brain Tumor Society still in that list? Mm. Brain tumor it's number. It's, num out. Yeah, it's out. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I want to put that back in. I want them, them in too. Because she's Heather, thank for you. Mother. Thank you very we'll much. Thank you. She's running for a mother to earn $10,000. Yep. Recall, the, it got eliminated when the board considered organizations that are receiving entries from other sources. Okay. They already received it. But this one's going to go to the, to the Hopkinton resident, though. Who's yeah. going to run it themselves? She's going to run it for her mom who yeah. passed. Yeah. Raise money. Yeah, oh, yeah. Another. My daughter's running this year, too. Who was a. So. Let's let it not be lost that the, the person that they're running for was a great Hopkins in person. Right. I, long, I would long, like, long I would like to try and keep that in. Yeah. So we still have one more. So to we go. have one more to cut. So we could look at some people that didn't achieve. Um, we could look at multiple entries. You know, we still have that project just because and the uh, food pantry and the food pantry. Um, and can you? Well, is there someone here from uh, Dignity Matters? I don't know what Dignity Matters is, and I'd like to have an explanation. I want to make sure that they're Hopkins based, and I want to know what they do. Yeah, Sorry, in, history there. yeah. In fact, we look we looked at the application. They are based in Hopkinton. Okay. They have a Hopkinton address, and. Um, the, the address. The primary, yeah, the, it's 14 Colela Farm Road, and the primary contact is Maureen Belger, yep. B E L G E R. Yep. Um, all great stuff in town. Yeah. Yeah, well. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm also looking at. Uh, numbers 36 and 37 is sky's the limit courtyard Hopkins and middle school Alan Keller desire to inspire Hopkins and middle school Alan Keller He's do good. we have representation from either or both of those groups here so mr. Keller is the principal at the middle school correct yeah and uh, they've done a lot of work uh, in honor of some students uh, in years past uh, mm -hmm. in that courtyard area uh, and the desire to inspire is also another organization within the middle school where the kids kind of promote uh, positive thinking and living and all that um, and helping each other out. But that is two similar. organizations in a similar entity, meaning HMS. Yep. So if it were, you know, uh, yeah, let's go one. I don't know. But we just did that before, we just talked about that before with the other two entities. Yeah, project just, just because. Yeah, because the same, same person applied. Yeah. But to, to, to Mr. Hur's point, uh, um, it's still that it's the same school, like, like we were just trying to talk about when it yeah. came to schools. These, you know, the junior class needs the money for their senior year and everything mm -hmm. else. So that was, but, you know, looking at the, at the courtyard in the, um, uh, and the desire to expire. We should probably just, you know, it's a tight year, so we just yep. want to pick one. So, Mr. Hurd, do you have enough um, kind of insight on those two to differentiate to you, 
to think which, I mean, it would be nice if Mr. Keller were here. He's sponsoring two of them. Um, it would, yes, Mr. Kamala. Respectfully, I, I really think that I made the offer to give up town department numbers with the understanding that we had eliminated organizations that already received entries elsewhere. Why this is important now is taking away a number from the police department and give uh, it that to is, the yeah, that is supporting, that is supporting uh, volunteer helpers who come to support this very important event and then giving that number to an entity that already receives a number elsewhere appears not to be fair. So I'm suggesting that the board stands by its initial position that entities that are receiving entries elsewhere be eliminated from the process. So what are you saying? The schools receive numbers no, elsewhere? No, no, no. I'm saying the brain, I'm saying the the brain, brain, yeah, the brain so tumor society. I guess, I guess the fight that I'm putting up for that is maybe more emotional than logical because uh, you know, they are getting two numbers, um, but uh, Tracy Keough, Tracy Clinton, was a, a, a really good friend of mine, and so was her sister Hope. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm a little bit more emotionally driven than I am um, logically driven on this. <clears throat> so, and the, and the daughter's running. It's, to me, that, that's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be digital on that one. Yeah, having, having done this 30 years and raised money for cancer research, I have no interest in scrapping that one. I would suggest we give Mr. Keller one and let Mr. Keller choose which organization he wants to give it to. Uh, that gets us to the 30, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. Uh, and you know we can't. And we could. And, and you know we I, do I don't know enough, John, about because. what's going on right. with the no, guard. Or, I, get, I, I know exactly. both are yeah, doing great things over there. Those you're, you're, just a, yeah. you're just you're just with the kids closest to that age. So if we yeah. figure we'd ask you. We could do the the same. You know, and if Mr. Kamala, if that's a a, a game changer for you on your negotiations. We could do the same thing with that project just because in the Hopkins Food Pantry. So that would get us down three, and then you would only have to take, uh, you know, four from the police department. Yeah. Well, we need to make that decision. I don't think we should put that on him. If we could take one more out of that, just because. Okay. We don't need that right now. Right. I recently toured that place, and I just was, my heart grew, you know, ten sizes bigger watching all that they're doing on yeah. both sides of that fence, if you will. Uh, helping people out. Yep. Yeah. My daughter was I, I, I think Mr. Keller would understand that he's got two great things he's doing in the middle school. He does great work all day long over there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he would understand the, the tight spot we're in. I'm glad the students stick around tonight to watch this. I think everybody can see how hard we're trying to wrestle through this to be fair and equitable as, as best we can. It's hard to please everybody. It's the job. Um, but I think we've got it to a point that's pretty good. Yeah. Good job. All right. Okay. So I think we're all set. Um, so do we need a motion on this at all? Please, yes. To distribute the uh, so. 2020 Boston Marathon Invitational Entries as described tonight. And uh, yeah, okay, but on this, you know, for, our, for our motion, it's, it's uh, make a motion to distribute the entries to the following organizations. So do we list? Okay, so we're gonna do police. What are they down? What, what's the police? Okay, for town departments, police uh, 10. 10. Fire department, two. Two. Senior center, two. Two. Marathon committee, five. Five. Hopkinton Public Library, zero. Okay. All right, um, so there's that. And then out of our, our list that we have here, do we need, so, we would say that we're going to go ahead and we're going to approve all of them except, and should I list the exceptions? Yeah. Yes. Yep. So we're going to approve all of those except the Bay Path Humane Society, number three on our list. Um, we are going to exclude, um, what are we going to do, the, the food pantry or the just because? No, they're both in. Yeah, both oh, they're in. both in, okay. Yes. So we're exclude going to exclude. Number 12. Uh, number 12. Got my papers out of, out of line here. Uh, yep. 12. Number 12, uh, Hopkins yeah. Center for the Arts. Yeah. Um, 
And then, uh, let's see. And then number 19, Hockington High School, class of 2023. Yep, they're excluded. Yeah. And then Life is Good Playmakers. What number is that? Number 29. Okay, yep. Yeah. New England Food and Dairy Council, number 30. Yes. Um, Sampa, yeah, n no, Sampa Fi. Sampa Fi, number 35. 35. One of Mr. Keller's. Yeah. So should we choose one or? No, I don't. So choose he'll it. choose it? Mr. Mr. Keller, Keller will choose, will choose between 36 and 37? Or do we have to choose that? Uh, yeah, I think we have to choose. It's we have to choose? Fair. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think we should choose that. Okay. Um, just, just we. Can we? One of those it, will be eliminated. Let me, let me, yeah. The motion can say one of those will be eliminated. Let me check with Elaine. Administratively, he applied for both, so it's appropriate for him to choose. Or he could split it between the two. Yeah. Exactly. It, it, he can split it between the two. He can choose one of the two. Well, he's he going to get one of those. He gets, those gets, one. gets yeah. one. Yeah. So we're down. I got seven, Mr. Chair. There's one more that we need to be taken out of here. Uh, let's see. That's good. We did that one. Um, we did number 12, right? Uh, Hopkins yeah. Center for the Arts. Yeah. We did number three, which is the Hopkins Humane, uh, Bay Path Society. The girls' youth lacrosse. Yeah. What? Youth lacrosse. It's the first time they've applied. Yeah, no, they're they're in. Though. No, okay. that was in. Just checking. Um, this is a mess. So the first year is seven. So we're out number three. Number three, we're out. Uh, taking out number 12. So that's seven. Eight. Taking out 29. Three. Taking out 35. Four. Taking out one of Mr. Keller's. Five. Taking out class of 23. Six. Two. Took out friends of the seniors, right? We did not take out friends of the seniors. We took out the. Um, uh, one more to take one? out. <laughs> um, there was another one that we took out. Mm -hmm. six the New England, the New England food and dairy, because that was out of town. It was, that was out of the first list. That was okay. Oh no, 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 that, no that would still, that would still count. Because of thirty. Oh yeah. No, 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 we're done. Wait, 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 we took out one. We, we had seven. We had to get to eight because Mr. Kamala was, we didn't have to get to eight. We only got to get to, it was 31 because Mr. Kamala took the library out over here. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's only seven coming out here. So we had the right list. Mm -hmm. And then one over there makes eight, so 38 to 30. Okay. okay. Right, so you, kept, you, you, you took out, you took out uh, six, not five. Yep, six. There we go. Is that everybody? Does that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we will. Re I'll request a motion to approve the list as noted. <laughs> <laughs> as kind of figured out. We fixed this. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, approve the invitation of request applications as presented tonight, with the exceptions. With the following exceptions, yeah, with the following exceptions, that the police department will receive 10, mm -hmm. the fire department 2, yeah. the senior center 2, yeah. the Hopkinton Public Library 0, and the following will be eliminated from the local civic organizations, Bay Path Human Society, Hopkinton Center for the Arts, Hopkinton High School Class of 2023, 
Life is Good Playmakers, New England Food and Dairy Council, Semperfy Fund, and Alan Keller will receive only one <clears throat> on behalf of the sky is the limit courtyard or the desire and or the desire to inspire hope into a school. So moved. Second. Hearing any further discussion? Hearing none? Oh wait, is there anyone in the audience that would like to have a uh, bite at the apple here and, and have a talk with us? Sure. <laughs> at the microphone. <laughs> So, what, could you like restate like why would why you would give a, a bib to the junior class rather than the freshman class? So the junior class will get their bib because they'll have they'll use these funds to fund their they've made it from their freshman and sophomore year. They're at juniors now, so they'll use it to fund their prom. This gives you guys in two more years you'll be able to come up and apply for it to help you with your prom. So ultimately, the money would go to the same thing. So could you, like, unless you could guarantee that within the next two years that you would give us a bib, I don't see the reasoning for why we couldn't get one this year. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I can't guarantee anything. I probably am not going to be here in two years. <laughs> so I know one of us definitely yeah. will not be here in two years. Yeah, so I can't guarantee anything. It's but, a fair question, but, but yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. And I would get into a law school degree as quickly as you can, because that was a pretty well put question. Thank you. <laughs> like how got yep. Yep. <laughs> but denied. <laughs> Good question. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Kids a freshman. I wouldn't do that until I was a sophomore. <laughs> Good. Uh, all right, so we're all set here. The meeting is over. <laughs> yeah, I wish the meeting was over. Bye. All right, so we're good. Thank, thank, thank you, everybody, yeah, for coming. Wait, thank you. Let's vote. So, hearing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain? Carries. Thank you. And to the, to the class of 23, I'm the Ted Stone on Chamberlain Street. <laughs> so if you're going <laughs> to... Not like you. I'm not going to go out eggy right now. <laughs> that was just, that was yeah, that's one of those no oh, good deed goes on. Really yep. I want thank you. Yeah, all right, so we are way behind the eight ball here. Yeah, that took an hour. Uh, moving forward, so yeah, we are going to do the license renewals. Oh, that's another long one. So we, can, no, we can do this pretty easily. Yeah, we are going to do it pretty easily. Because this year, yeah. Yeah. If, I, if I may do the chair, yes, Mr. Mr. Kamalo and Ms. Lazarus, you know, this year, you know, I've, I've been here for this. This will be my sixth one. And um, there's always been contingencies. And I gotta say, what a great job you did this year of pulling these in. And I don't see contingencies under any of them. Fabulous job. <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. Um, there's always contingencies. Somebody didn't do this and didn't do that, didn't follow up. Yep. But, you know, our town hall, I mean, look at no, no contingencies yep. anywhere on any of these licenses. Yep. This is the cleanest sheet. Exactly. I don't know, Mr. Mr. Hur has been here forever, so he, he, he might be able to comment even more. But in the six years, this is the first time that we've had absolutely clean sheet with every single entity coming through. Oh. Right. Great. Okay. Wow, thanks. Yeah, uh, and through the chair, uh, credit goes to Maria Glynn. Um, from the office. She is the one who's coordinating this process, uh, reaching early in the process to the licensees, uh, as well as uh, um, working collaboratively with the inspectional teams to make sure that the inspections happen. Uh, we're also, yeah, we're also mindful of the uh, board's uh, desire to be efficient in the process. Um, they are still perhaps eight more outstanding uh, license renewals that will I'm sorry, I missed that. Meeting. Can you say it one more time? Yeah, there are eight outstanding license renewals that we'll bring to the next meeting. We'll yeah, because there's one on here that I'm not seeing that I yeah. always have an interest in. Yeah. So, as long as these are good and that, that one license is not in here, uh, we can go ahead and unilaterally approve those. Is that correct? So, well, I, I, I'll go name them and go in, if you want me to do that. Yeah. You know, just so we can have it on the record. 
if you'd like. Mr. Chair, if I could, please. You may. Before Mr. Catino names all the licenses that we feel are in order, is that a fair statement, Mr. Kamal? Correct. There's no outstanding issues. Correct. Um, you know, the licenses for these businesses are, are very important to the town. Mm -hmm. And without these licenses and the others that will get cleaned up here in the next couple of weeks, a lot of the services that we have in town, uh, we wouldn't have. We wouldn't be able to access. So uh, I'm a big believer in um, supporting our businesses whenever we can. And I think the Board of Selectmen or the Select Board does that routinely and will continue to do that. And we rarely have issues with licenses. We certainly don't seek issues with licenses. Um, and we hope all the license holders understand how much the town is behind them uh, in their business ventures. And certainly we appreciate all the support they provide to the town as well uh, to make everything work uh, seamlessly during this process. It's not easy for us, the town and the staff, and Maria in particular, to go through all this and do all this work. The town goes out of its way as best it can to sometimes hold the hand of certain license holders to help them get through the process if they're newer to the, to the, to the game, if you will. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, the town supports uh, our businesses as much as we can. We look forward to more businesses coming to town. Uh, we've got a couple of shots, uh, spots where uh, rentals could be uh, entered into. And uh, we certainly encourage people to come because we will support them any way we can. And we ask that they support us back uh, as well. Thank you. Nicely said. So, so uh, Mr. Chair. So uh, I'm, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, all alcoholic beverage licenses for the following. Uh, Bill's Pizzeria, Woodville Rod and Gun Club, Zio's Quattro, Co Restaurant, 110 Grill, Carbonius Restaurant, Skinland LLC, Cornell's uh, Irish Pub, Dynasty, um, Hopkinton Country Club, Pantai Restaurant. So moved. Any Second. Further, any further discussion? If, I, if I may, Mr. through the chair, um, if Mr. Cortino is willing to adjust his motion um, instead of alcohol licenses, perhaps you say all the licenses as listed oh. in the handout distributed this dated December 3rd, 2019. Absolutely, Mr. I think, Mr. I think I, I, you read it. I right. moved it, right? Right. So, yeah, that's in my motion. Yep. I can now second it. <laughs> okay, no further discussion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? It carries. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to uh, make the motion to uh, for a farmer's market pouring permit for craft line breweries or start line brewery. And that's the only one. So moved. Second. Okay, you, you made that motion. That I time. made the motion. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All so, opposed? Uh, abstention? Come on, please. I'll make a motion Aye. to approve the uh, following uh, wine and malt beverage licenses. Uh, oh, there's only one, the spoon. Second. I, again. Oh, yeah, all the, li all the licenses as written in the, yes. in the handout document. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Uh, is that seconded? Yeah, I second it. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All opposed? The following all alcohol as well Abstentions, as. Abstentions? Oh. And it carries. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Uh, um, this is for all alcohol beverages package store uh -huh. as well as any other list of licenses required in the handout document. Uh, Old Town Liquors, Hopkinton Wine and Spirits, and Marty's Liquors. Did you make a motion? You made the motion, yes. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? And it carries. Okay, the following of wine and malt beverages, as well as any additional licenses on the um, document. Where are we up there? We're on number five. I made the motion for all wine and malt, and it's uh, Hopkinton Mobile. 
And that's the only one. Okay. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed abstentions? It carries. The phone, I'd like to make a motion for the common victual licenses for uh, and as well as any additional licenses on the handout for uh, ARA Mark, for uh, which is uh, on South Street, ARA Mark, and South Street. Um, th th there's a, several of them, 171, 176, 228, 42. and 42. Um, and, and Red Barn uh, Coffee at Angels, Hopkinton uh, Dunkin' Donuts, uh, the Dunkin' Donuts on South Street, Muffin House, the Spoonery, Subway, Starbucks Coffee um, on West Main Street, and uh, Price Chopper Starbucks, the number 231. So, and that's it. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, abstention? Okay, carries. The, uh, I'd like to make a motion for the license of the purchase and sale of motor vehicles. Of, uh, as well as any uh, licenses uh, listed in the handout for Bulldog Fire Apparatus, um, uh, Hoptown Auto Sales, um, Main Street Service Center, Whitehall Auto Sales, and WSAB Enterprises. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, abstention it carries. Okay, the, uh, I'd like to make a motion for a municipal street license uh, and any other additional licenses required in the handout for uh, the Metro West Region, Regional Transit Authority. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain. Okay. As a member of that board, I don't want to vote All twice. Right. Okay. So three to one. And as the uh, and for the final one, I'd like to make a motion for a livery, uh, livery license uh, for uh, Abel uh, Limousine. Okay. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Yes, sir. You have your hand up. Yes, it's going to be discussed at the next board of select at the next select board meeting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did you come all the way from Rangeley for that? All right. Oh. <laughs> all right. Good. Thank you, okay. Mr. Chair. I believe we had. Uh, we have some folks here that serve alcohol for a living. I believe we had three or four violations this year. Is that correct? Townwide or sting operations that were creating. How many do we have this year? Since we last we issued licenses? I um, two or three. Two or three. So we've had two or three violations of the license that people hold in town. Not the people in the room. But just so I will, this is a message to all of us, to the town, to the license holders. Two or three, uh, I don't recall if there was a financial impact on those because I think they were um, fairly new offenses, if you will. But uh, we've had offenses in the past where there were significant tens and tens of thousands of dollars of impact. So all license holders, please be careful with that license and please be careful with the residents of Hopkinton and our children and everybody else and do what we need done based on the license. Thank you. Thank you. Well, happy okay. holidays and I look forward to seeing you guys in the store. All right. All right. Uh, special town meeting, Mr. Kamalu. Yeah, um, we have um, two specific requests uh, for tonight. Uh, we have distributed a draft motions document. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, which I'm distributing now. And also for members of the public. This is the draft motions document? I, yes, it's, it's almost final. We're making final, the, the last final touches to it. Um, and tonight we're requesting that the board um, state its recommendations uh, on um, several of the articles that are listed.
Um, the first one being, if the first one is uh, rescind Main Street corridor vote and discontinue the project. Uh, it's Article One, uh, as stated previously. This is a citizens' petition, uh, and we we believe from previous um, discussions by the board that the board. Um, has taken a specific position, and we want that perhaps restated tonight. Yeah, so I would definitely say that the board has taken a stance on that. Um, so I'm confused, I'm, Mr. Chair. I'm very confused. I'm yeah. very confused. Yeah. Why are there two motions for one article? Three um, motions for one article? Yeah, the, this issue was discussed uh, during the moderator's meeting, uh, and based on town council's advice, um, we advise that uh, the proponents could indeed uh, offer more than one motion. Okay. Yeah, so, so this is a decision that was approved by town council. So maybe back in 1948 or something like that in Hopkinton, we had an article that had two or three motions per one article, but I've never seen this. So why would we have three motions inside one article? I don't, I'm not, yeah. that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, um, two of the motions pertain to the substance of the article. Uh, the third motion is procedural. So how are we gonna debate this? Are we gonna have motion one and then we're gonna debate motion one and then we're gonna take a vote on motion one and then we're gonna debate motion two and then we're gonna take a debate on, a vote on motion two and then we're going to have a debate on or motion this procedural motion. We're going to have motion two, and we're going to debate that. So there's going to be three different debates on the same article. Um, again, this 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 issue was discussed uh, extensively during the moderator's uh, meeting. The town moderator is aware of the challenges. However, he felt that he he could manage the the discussion. How's he going to manage the discussion? How's he going to do it? Yeah, he 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 was clear on the point that. Uh, the procedural motion uh, is going to be discussed uh, alongside the first motion to be moved forward. Okay, so we throw that into the first one, fine, but how are we going to have two motions under <laughs> one article? Are we going to have two separate debates and they're just going to repeat themselves each time? I think based on past practice, I have seen the town moderator allow for a general discussion of the topic. Uh, and then move on to specific questions on each motion, and then votes be taken. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and again, as I stated earlier, these motions are still in draft form. We received indication uh, from the petitioners that they may revise these motions further. They may advise what? They may revise, they may make additional revisions to the motions. So, so I don't have a pro, well, I shouldn't say that. The motions, the topic, okay, is why we're going to special town meeting. That's one thing. The process of having two motions under the same article I just simply don't see how procedurally we're going to handle that. Yeah. Forget what the motion says for me. I don't care if they change the motions a little bit. That's fine. But they have multiple motions. How do you, how do you procedurally handle that under Massachusetts general law for an article and a motion to that article? Physically, how's that going to happen? Yeah, to Mr. Hurst's point, we, we, we you know, it's, it's just like, you know, when, when it's, it's, it's uh, Mr. Catino, read the motion. And, you know, which, what do we read when we come to the warrant article? So why don't, should yeah, we, we li listen to the town clerk, see what he has to say? Yes, yeah. through the chair. <laughs> uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, one of, to the comment I'm just asking about, how to procedurally do this and make this work. Um, one example that shows it's not entirely unprecedented due to the fact that they did separate initially in their petition and through their motion two separate parts of their article uh, is that we do often with articles like CPC recommendations, 
break them out for the different letters that are recommended so that we can vote on them separately. Uh, if one might be more controversial, we don't want to put the whole thing, all our eggs in one basket, so to speak. Um, so it wouldn't be completely unprecedented to do it. I mean, it would still be, it's the only difference of it is they're putting it in their initial motions rather than someone's proposing an amendment to it later. I can see the letter format that you described. That's more in line with what I've seen the precedent be in, in town meeting in my 20 years doing it. Um, but just the individual different motions to me is just going to be, personally I think it's going to be very confusing. Uh, I'm not sure how we got to this point in this piece of this puzzle, but uh, I guess we'll wait and see. If, if, if I may, um, through the chair, to your last comment, Mr. Hare, we got to this point after the realization that the first part of the article, or the petition article, could be acted upon. However, our town meeting, town council advised that um, the second part of the petition um, was somewhat problematic because the legislative board cannot direct the executive arm of government on what to do. And I think that's, that may have been the driver behind the separation. So I'm a little confused by that. So you're saying that the petition that created the article, or then the article itself, so let's just go to the article because we're past the petition. The article, which was posted in the warrant, which was one article that had a couple of parts to it, yeah. you're saying the second half of that part is what? You said problematic. That's yeah, there was, yes, yes, problematic in the sense that town, town meeting cannot pay town council cannot direct the select board, cannot order the select board. So town, who cannot? Town meeting. Town meeting cannot order? The select board. Okay. It, yeah, it's a situation of you're the chief executive of the town, mm -hmm. and the legislative authority cannot order the executive branch what to do. Uh, they can advise, and they can make budgets, and they can you know, give all the tools to the executive branch to execute. But not necessarily order them to take certain actions. So it's not, so, so it's not in order then? The article's not in order? The conclusion made yesterday by town council was that whilst town meeting cannot order the select board to perform certain activities, discussing the issue was in order. Essentially, yeah. be a non binding yeah. portion of the article. The motion is non binding, but they can still, at town meeting, can still discuss and vote on it. So we can debate at town meeting for a couple of hours of everybody's time. I'm not pointing at you, Connor. I'm just. I know. We can debate at town meeting for a couple of hours because we don't do much for less than a couple of hours. Uh, this particular motion, and it would be a non binding motion, so what's the point? I, I believe the town moderator will manage that issue. <laughs> Good luck to him. <laughs> okay, again, the ask is uh, for the board to take a position on this specific article. Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen not support Article 1 of the Special Town Meeting on December 9, 2019. Second. Any further discussion? None. Um, okay, hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain. Carries four to zero. Okay. That's just going to be crazy. Oh, I hope I get called into work that night. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather do CPR than to go to this thing. You, sir, are in the center of the room that night. <laughs> yeah. Article number two, that's for the Hopkinton High School expansion, engineering and design services, are specifically moving that the town vote to transfer the sums of $300,000 from the school department stabilization fund established under Article 15, paragraph one of the 2019 annual town meeting and 
200,000 from the unexpended appropriation made under Article 15, Paragraph 4 of the 2019 Annual Town Meeting for a total of 500,000 to be used for the purposes of the engineering and design services for the additional classrooms at the Hopkins Town High School. So in effect, this is this is an action for this year's. This will proceed immediately after special town meeting because this is this year's money being moved to, to fund this. Correct. Correct. Yes. Mr. Chair, I move that the board of selectmen move uh, support. Oh, hold up. Come on up. Jump in. <laughs> Quickly. So that, just to let you know, there was a motion on the table to support this. Yes. So if, you, so if you want to talk about it, <laughs> <laughs> the motion on the table is to support this. But if you want to expound on it. We, we love that you are so supportive, uh, as always. And I know there's a lot of work uh, that's going on and coming up with the motions in particular. The second motion is something that we were wondering if um, you know it's required. We, we are of the opinion that the two hundred thousand was already appropriated at the Maytown meeting, so we don't need the two hundred thousand. It's the three hundred thousand that we require uh, to be transferred. Is that true, Mr. Kamala? Um, I, I believe yes. There was a question asked earlier by uh, Dr. Kavano. There was a response from Town Council. Uh, Town Council opined that. Um, after careful review of the motion that was approved at the annual town meeting, he would, uh, he would advise that we move the motion as described. I see. It's a perfect timing. We were at the CIC earlier. Is it okay if Dr. Kavanaugh also joined Absolutely, us? Absolutely, yeah. Thank you. So I'm a little confused, Mr. Chair. Is this 200 grand in or out, Mr. Kamal? It's, it's in based on town council's advice. Uh, he looked carefully at the language and felt that um, the town is uh, in an advantageous position if there's a specific vote by town meeting authorizing the use of these funds for the purposes described tonight. The, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm trying to bring up the, his exact email. Um, where he felt that Move the it. annual town meeting vote, yeah, 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 the annual town meeting vote limited use of the appropriated money to pay school department costs related in whole or in significant part as reasonably determined by the school committee to impacts on the Hopkinton public schools resulting from enrollment by residents of legacy farms. If challenged, I am not completely confident that a school committee decision to spend money on a feasibility study would be deemed reasonably determined to result from enrollment by residents of legacy farms. My confidence is much higher if the town meeting has expressly endorsed the decision. Meaning if we leave the 200 grand in this motion, yes. it's better off. Yep. We're moving. Basically. So I would, I would take issue with town council that the legacy development hasn't triggered some of this need for this money to go over there. Mm -hmm. But if this is a safety net to make sure we still get the 200 grand over there, I would encourage the school committee just to leave it in the motion. It's not going to hurt you at all. So essentially town council is suggesting that because it says in whole or in part, because of the growth due to legacy farms, that maybe a feasibility study doesn't quite fit that definition. Therefore, it may warrant a second look by town meeting. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that, but it can't hurt, and I don't think it's going to change the outcome of this scenario at all. I agree with you. I don't think it's going to change the outcome. I mean, originally it was put under the purview of the school committee, but I understand that, I understand his position that a feasibility study may or may not. I mean, I think that it's sort of one step away, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, we're adding six classrooms because of enrollment growth, and Legacy Farms is, in fact, part of the enrollment growth. Yep. You can't add the six classrooms without a feasibility study, but I understand that it's one step away from the actual classroom. I have just one clarification here. So, um, 
you know, I'm glad that the select board is looking to uh, support this article and the motion's been made. I'm wondering what... But not what seconded yet. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you know, and I, I... Sorry to be getting into a little bit of a negative here. If it doesn't get the two-third majority, we still would have the 200,000, correct, which we already have appropriated. And then you can From go the have that fight with town council if, yeah. that, if you need to. Yeah. Right. So I'm just wondering, so are we able to use a portion of that as was passed in the previous town meeting? Are we still able to expand that? That vote still stands. I beg your pardon? The previous annual town meeting vote still stands. Okay. But then the interpretation that town council is offering about this 200K, that discussion may have to come back around again. Uh, uh, but we can help you there. I think we could help there. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. Great. Thank you. I think the other articles are just fine uh, as they are. And thank you so much for working on it. And to talk to Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> abstentions? <laughs> and it carries. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Chair, yes. I move that the uh, Hopkinton Board of Selectmen support Article 3 at the special town meeting on December 9, 2019. Um, I don't know if that's a binding motion, as I don't think that we are now called the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Hart. Mr. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Parliamentarian <laughs> Jr. Officially, we actually, if I may, Mr. Mr. Chairman, we actually, officially we, we are. As, as we are still considered what it is yeah. in the town charter. As a matter of fact, on any ballot, it will still say the Board of Selectmen. Okay. Then I, I will, re I will re rescind, <laughs> common word, I will rescind my motion and put a new motion forward that the Select Board support Article 3 of the, uh, of the annual town meeting for the Hopkinton High School Expansion Construction Services. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? It carries. <laughs> Mr. Herr. Mr. Chair, I support, uh, I move that the select board uh, support Article 4 of the annual uh, special town meeting December 9, 2019 uh, for the installation of modular classrooms as submitted by the school committee. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Carries. Mr. Chair, Article 5, uh, I support, uh, I move. I'm saying that, I apologize. I, am, I, I move that the Hopkinton Select Board support Article 5 of the special town meeting on December 9, 2019. Second. Any further discussion? Mr. Here? Chair. You so, the motion. I know. <laughs> These are five articles, four articles that the school committee is putting forward uh, to address the unprecedented growth in the Hopkinton public schools that we have seen in the last couple of years and we will be seeing for many years to come. Um, it's about ten million dollars when we put all this together on the table. At the night of town meeting there will be graphs, there will be charts, there will be tax impacts that we will show the residents of Hopkinton and certainly those that attend town meeting, the town meeting members themselves, uh, where our debt service numbers are starting mm -hmm. to come down. We've had that here recently um, because the high school is coming off beginning next year and some other debt is being paid off, the mortgages on other projects are being paid off. Mm -hmm. So as the debt service comes down and we continue to fund our operating budget with debt service numbers at certain ratios, we've got room in our budgets to add additional investment in the schools without spiking upward the debt service curve. The debt service curve will actually move over a year or two, but it'll still continue to trend down. So it's important for the taxpayers to understand that right. while we're spending some additional money because of growth, we've got other monies that we've been spending in the past going away. This allows for some flexibility in our fiscal budgeting to make this happen. Okay. Any further discussion? We can afford it. Carry on. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions carries. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Catino, why don't you take this one? You're the kind of the catalyst <laughs> on this. You're the this is your passion, so I'd like you to go ahead and do this. I, I'd like to make a motion for the board uh, to accept uh, and to support the Article 6 street acceptance for Legacy Farms Road North. Okay. Second that. Mr. Kamala, do you have anything for us on this? I do have an update. Um, 
Yesterday, Town Council, um, Elaine and I had a conversation with the petitioners, and um, this was a discussion uh, following the a statement from uh, Mr. McDowell that uh, he was not going to be able to provide the street layout plans uh, as was previously discussed by the board. Um, for those listening at home, uh, the board's, uh, the town's requirements is that if there's going to be a street acceptance, at least uh, the acceptance plans need to be submitted to the town clerk's office uh, seven days before town meeting, as well as um, having those plans be part of the public hearing process. Um, we were not able to, to accomplish that goal. Um, Realising that this would not be possible, uh, the compromise uh, language that was agreed to between town council, and I believe Ravi is here, uh, I have not seen any objection so far from Ravi, uh, is the following, uh, that the town meeting, the special town meeting will be asked to move that the town vote to request, I underline that word, that the planning board and select board take all required actions to facilitate a vote to accept Legacy Farms North from the intersection of Franklin Road to Wilson Street as a public way at the 2020 annual town meeting, provided that the required layout plans are submitted to said boards in a timely manner for such actions. Again, this is a request asking for specific information. A town meeting will not be ordering the select board or the planning board. Mr. Chair. Yes. So Mr. Kamalo, in lay terms, what I read this motion to be is we recognize that we're not ready for special town meeting because the, legacy, the final layout plan was not completed. Correct. We recognize that this is a significant issue for the folks of Legacy Farms and their neighborhood uh, to get the proper bus service that the, the children need. Mm -hmm. We recognize that we've got another town meeting, town meeting coming up in five months time and that between now and then we're gonna do everything we can and we'll likely get it all done because that's plenty of time. Uh, and then it'll be on the warrant again in May of 2020. And this is just a request to make sure all this happens in a timely manner. <laughs> Correct. Is that a correct assessment of this motion? Yes. Uh, right. Mr. Kamala, oh, sorry, Mr. Hur. I'm fine. So, looking at this motion, do we, all parties involved, think that all the proverbial, we can get all the proverbial ducks in a row for the May town meeting, for the information that's needed here? I believe uh, Mr. McDowell has heard loud and clear from the town what he needs to do. Okay. Good. But CONCOM needs to do their thing, and CIC needs to do their thing. We all need to do our thing. Exactly, Pro provided the appropriate documents are submitted okay. to the town. Okay. <clears throat> Ravi, are you okay with this motion? Yes. Uh, Come on up. I feel much less intimidated today. There's much less of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yes, uh, given that uh, unfortunately there's nothing much else we can do with, without the layout that unfortunately uh, there's nothing else to approve. Yep. But uh, unless the, the select board has any other uh, ideas as to how to expedite this further, but you know, I, this is definitely the best outcome that we can think of. Okay. I would agree. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So I will entertain a motion. What do you do? Uh, has it set, been seconded? Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Carries. Thank you. All right. Mr. Kamalu. Uh, looks like we're on the annual town meeting articles by law changes. Yes. Um, next, I said I, they, there were two specific requests uh, for the board tonight. Uh, the second request is that the board set the uh, ballot questions uh, for the three articles that require debt exclusion. Yeah, question one, shall the town of Hawkington be allowed to exempt from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half 
so-called the amounts required to pay for the bond issued in order to construct, reconstruct, renovate, alter, and improve Hawkington High School. Sure. Question two, shall the town of Hawkington be allowed to exempt from the provisions of proposition two and a half, so-called the amounts required to pay for the bond issued in order to purchase and install modular classrooms at the Elmwood School, including associated engineering, design, and construction? And question three, shall the town of Hawkington be allowed to exempt from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half, so-called, the amounts required to pay for the bond issued in order to purchase and install modular classrooms at the Hopkinton, at the Hopkins uh, School, including associated engineering, design, and construction. Okay. Board members? Mr. Kamalo, this, these ballot questions, <coughs> when will these be on a ballot? Did I miss that? That's, yes, um, we, yes, we, we are proposing that um, we will come back to the board at your next meeting following the special town meeting and propose a date. We have talked tentatively with the uh, school superintendent and the town clerk as well. Indications are that the our school department would prefer that the election be held in February. Okay, so let's, that's why I asked this question. Let's, we need to explore this a little bit so the town yeah. understands this. I have a question for the town clerk. <laughs> so we have a special town meeting on December 9th. Mm -hmm. And following the special town meeting, we're gonna have an election just to look at these three, three ballot, ballot questions, questions. that yes. come out of the special town meeting. Mm -hmm. So, um, this is news to me, not surprising, but news to me. Doesn't change my position on these articles in any way, shape, or form. It reaffirms some of my concern about the process that we're going through and how we're self-governing right now, which is, mm -hmm. to some extent, out of order. Mm -hmm. right. Physically, literally out of order, right? Uh, and that we're changing it up a little bit here. Um, and this is another expense, not the articles issue, but the whole process is another expense that we got to deal with. It's About how much would this election cost for three articles? It, so it's, it's hard to be able to put an exact number. I can give you kind of a really rough range. Uh, so obviously all elections cost pretty much the same because it requires the same amount of people, requires the same same equipment. Uh, so we're looking at between seven and nine and a half thousand for the election. Plus the 10 million. <coughs> yes. So 10 million, $10,000. I'll try to keep below 10,000. And if we don't do this now, like we could have the special town meeting vote and then throw these questions on the ballot in the May general election. election. Legally, yes. That slows down their ability to get going on these articles now, which we see as being time-sensitive articles. From my conversations with the superintendent and Mr. Kamalo, yes, that was the, the major concern. Um, we had also explored looking at potentially trying to combine uh, this with the presidential primary where we can basically just have a second ballot that would be able to be handed out as people check into two different elections that are being held at the exact same time. But that was slightly outside of the timeline that the school department was looking at. When is the presidential primary? March. It is on March, March. 3rd. March. Then we have the February vacation week. Yeah, how much is this special town meeting costing us? So again, the, the numbers are tentative and they're kind of spread around multiple departments when it comes to town meeting. Uh, I know the town manager's office handles a lot of it when it comes to the supplies and the equipment that go into being there at the town meeting and obviously the it's school so department's kind enough to host us. Um, my department probably spends uh, close to two and a half uh, thousand for it. Um, I know when we were looking at some initial numbers combining multiple departments, it looks at roughly the costs being uh, closer to four and a half to five, but there's always additional costs that come with it and just additional employee time that goes into working on all of it. 
doesn't take into consideration all the volunteers, <coughs> all the hours that the volunteers do and take away from their family and and, and, and that's, yes. a, that's 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 another school day that's going to be you know challenged with parking yes. and everything else. Uh, yeah, we we had some some scheduling issues. It's tough when it's on a tight timeline at, at any point. So it's you know, and you're at this time point we're in the school year, so we're clashing with uh, with other school events and things like that as well. So it's it's been an interesting scheduling experience. I think it's just important that we start to uh, socialize this concept or this situation in town as soon as possible. I mean, we're, we, we, we generally have a Maytown meeting and a May election. We're going to have a Maytown meeting and a May election in 2020. And in December of 2019, next week and then at some point thereafter in early 2020, we're having a town meeting and another election meaning folks have to go to the school and vote to support these three articles for the schools. Um, and that, that and all this discussion about the corridor project and special town meeting in general, this has not been discussed at all. Right. Right. So this is a new piece of information, folks, that we all have to get uh, organized around in terms of understanding that we're, we're, we're really doing a repeat here. <laughs> a to whole, be election process in between these two it's going to cost like between 15 and 20 thousand dollars altogether and it's not budgeted anywhere so i so how, how does that get handled if it's not budgeted so uh i always make sure to budget for a special town meeting just in case because you never know when one might pop up um we have emergency situations come up all the time so that i have budgeted for that um, so when it comes to special town elections, they tend to be a little bit more predictable along the lines of that only you as the select board can actually set uh, a ballot in motion and start that unless it's, I mean, even for the uh, federal and state level ones, you need to vote on the warrant and sign off on that warrant for the election to be held legally. <coughs> So abstractly, what happens now, Mr. Um, Deegan, if 200 people uh, decide to throw a warrant, uh, you know, a citizen's petition together and want to call a special town meeting to rename Hopkinton to Catinoville, um, mm -hmm. would we have funds in our budget to cover that? I don't think we'd need them. <laughs> that might be a little tight. It might be tough to get the 200 signatures. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm actually on Woodville. Woodville. So, um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off moving forward because it's... But the question is legit. Yeah. Where, yeah. where does this it stop? This is another election. Stop? That's, that elections are big deals. It's yeah. not like, and, you know... And, so my thing is, where does it meetings. stop? Um, you know, we've had this process for a long time. I know there was a, a long-time Hopkins resident that brought up that this is... Not the first time that this has happened. The citizens' petition calling a special town meeting happened in the 80s. Um, um, but uh, you know what? Nothing can come of my comments moving forward. So um, what do we need? Let's, let's see what we can do to close this meeting. Yeah, we don't, have, vote, to, we don't vote, have to vote on this tonight, correct? Or set a date tonight? No, I think it may be helpful to vote the questions. Um, again, to your point that... Um, this may be an opportunity to continue to socialize these programs. You vote the questions, board submits them to the town clerk's office, uh, and we'll put them up on the town website. So what I'm looking for is a motion to approve the questions as presented tonight and to submit them to the town clerk's office. To yes. set the ballot questions. Yes. Okay, so I'll make a motion to... Oh. Uh, okay. oh, I'm sorry. Just <clears throat> How soon do you really want to get this started? You couldn't wait for the May town election? I mean, February, April, May. I mean, or it's only- even March, or even March. Or yeah, March. oh, March. March 3rd, is not, it's, it's only a few weeks later than February. So through the chair, my understanding, I was not part of the meeting, but I did follow up with Dr. Kavanaugh about this. And my understanding is that there was some reservation from the town clerk side to do it on March 3rd, that it might cause some confusion for the voters. And that was the reason not to do it on March 3rd. The, uh, so we're having a meet, uh, an election 
on, well, we're having a primary on March 3rd. So we have to be open for business on March 3rd. I said we do it on March yeah. 3rd. So I understood, so Mr. Deegan, you think that there will be confusion on the townspeople on that? I think that there, so I, I do believe there will be some confusion both on the town, on the voter side as well as election worker side. It's a much different process, um, but not to, to disregard what you're saying. Um, when I was talking with the superintendent uh, yesterday, the discussion was more around uh, you know the different hurdles that come with doing it at different times of year, and I, you know, I said obviously we need to see what's what's in with your timeline. And from the email that I received earlier today, it sounded like it was more of a timeline issue than it was a um, than it was with the concerns around the the confusion portion. We saw, just, why would there be? Conf I mean, I'm confused. Well, we still have time to discuss this. We, we can do it at our next meeting, <laughs> yeah. no. and, and we can you know have, yeah, have we want to we get. Well, some I, feedback if we can I, if if i may i can very briefly describe where the confusion can come in when you do host two elections at the same time um, the issue that comes about there is especially when one's a partisan election and one is a nonpartisan election that you can't put them on the same ballot so besides there are going to be boxes and boxes of ballots for each party there will also be boxes and boxes of ballots of, that we have to pay for as the town to go towards this. The machines will all be coded so that they will read the different ballots differently and we'll get a really long receipt at the end of the night. The issue comes about where you cannot assume that whoever walks up to vote is going to be participating in both elections. Presidential primaries tend to be very well attended. So uh, of, I know other town clerks that have been involved where they've done it on state election days people come in and they might, when they're at the check-in table, they don't want to look like they're not participating in one, participating in another when they're right there. So they might end up saying, oh yeah, sure, I'll take both. And then they just leave it behind in a booth and we have to do a lot of extra reconciliation at the end of the night. So there are hurdles that come along with doing that and it's primarily due to uh, different appearances and confusion around you can't just assume someone's getting both you have to offer if they say I want just the local one then you don't give them a presidential one if they say no I just want to vote in this primary then okay that's all you get but why couldn't you put why couldn't everybody gets one ballot for the for the presidential primary because we're partisan elections by law mm -hmm. and everybody gets one ballot and on that same whether you take a Republican ballot or a Democratic ballot, and the independent can pick either way. That's a question. Um, you put the same questions on either ballot. Why couldn't we do that? Because each of the, so it's it's not a really a single primary in a legal sense. It's multiple primaries, one for each party. So right. those but are all different ballots, different the elections. The questions one, two, and three that that we're going to approve tonight are are approved. Why can't we have a Democratic ballot? that has question one, two, three on it, as well as the Democratic primary, the Republican with question one, two, three on it, and you'd have to do a neutral one because there are some free thinkers that. So I, I would, and there might be people who don't want to participate in one and only want to participate in the other. And they don't fill out. And they don't fill out, yeah. So, um, so the, the issue there would, I would have to, I don't want to jump to anything too quickly on that. The advice I have seen is that that would not be possible, but I can double check with the state and see if we could do something like that. My guess is the answer will be no, but I'm more than happy to do the due diligence and double check on yeah, that. So we don't have to set this date today, correct, Mr. Kamala? Correct. So let's go ahead and, and uh, the vote, the, yeah, vote the three questions. I made, the, I, I made a motion, uh, it was waiting for a second. I'll second a motion to set the ballot questions uh, following special town meeting. Okay. And a date to be determined. It's in your motion, right? Yes. When we're going to set the date for the oh, meeting. Oh, well, I, I, oh, and a date to be determined. I just, I thought we were just voting the verbiage and, then, and we're going to just announce it next meeting. Well, you so, set, so that's you seconded, seconded with a friendly amendment. Is yeah. that a friendly amendment? Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. so it's seconded with Fine. a friendly, you accept it? Okay, good. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all aye. in favor, aye. aye. All opposed, abstentions, it carries. Great. 
All right. Town manager report, Mr. This Kamalu. Uh, in your packet, I included an update on the Main Street Corridor project. Yep. Um, of significance is the letter of support that came from the uh, from the chair of the planning board addressed to the ch chair of the select board. Also, um, getting approval from uh, Master OT regarding the uh, proposed changes outside 5 West Main Street. Yep. And then continuing our conversations with the owners of uh, 97 Main Street. 97 Main, Main Street. Street. 97 Main Street. Yeah. Can you give me a name to that property? Who owns it? 97, 97 Main Street. So it's not the Palmer residence, correct? They're, They're smaller number. Yeah. yeah. So 77 Main Street. So the fire, seven, fire department 73. 73. Uh, Carrigan Park, the old high school is uh, 85. Mm -hmm. So they're like 89, 80, 87, 89. Yeah. And then the, the old Terry apartment buildings there were what, 90, 91, 93. So it's got to be the cleaners. Yes, the cleaners. Yes, the cleaners. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then the response letter to Ed Harrow regarding bike lanes. I'm all set with that. That's good. Need anything for me on that? I, I thought no? these letters good. were good uh, answers and to people's questions. Is, is there a way to have them on the table for town meeting so people can see the answers to some of these? Yeah, we've included them on the uh, town website um, for the project. We are also now going through the compilation of materials to be uh, shared at town meeting and we will consider this as well. I thought they were good and should be in. So that people know we've been bending over backwards for these. Okay. Liaison reports. Uh, I did talk to John Palmer on the tax relief and uh, he let me know when the next meeting is and they have a their applications went out. Uh, Stuart sent them out to all the people who got them last year, and uh, they're expecting to get them, have them all back shortly. And then we will have a meeting. Yeah. Um, there, there was also one item on the agenda list that we are simply putting in front of the board and suggesting that if you have any ideas, please forward them to uh, the town manager's office. And this is in regards to any proposed annual town meeting articles or bylaw changes? Okay. FY21 budget uh, process is heating up. Um, we, we, are, we will ramp up right after uh, the special town meeting. Okay, good. Mr. Uh, Katina, what do you got? <clears throat> well, growth study had the public forum last week. Uh, oh, no, the, the, uh, the numbers uh, continue to come in and, and um, really show that uh, you know, Hopkins really has done it uh, as much as we're growing fast. That the the bylaws and the and the planning that's been in place really has done a pretty darn good job over the over the uh, past few decades. Uh, Mr. Herb brought that up earlier at, 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 a, at a meeting. And it's uh, absolutely true. The, uh, the growth uh, really doesn't seem to be coming from where a lot of people think. Um, but uh, the numbers still keep coming. We're crunching them to try and uh, come to some, uh, some good conclusions. Good. So. I just want to remind people, if you don't mind, through the chair, sure. that this weekend is the downtown stroll and all the Christmas festivities and uh, I'd like to see the citizens get out and uh, support our downtown businesses and uh, really take a good look at the downtown before <laughs> project. Good. While you're out there. <laughs> so the future board agenda items, we're good there. Do we have any future board agenda items? Nope, no, none. I will hear a motion to adjourn. So move, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none.
Yeah, more in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, abstain. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a good Thank night. You. Have a good night. Drive carefully, everyone. And uh, December 9th, annual town meeting. I mean, uh, special town meeting.